AJ and you are having friends face up yes. this morning after you pulled apart. What did you make of it and what happened? You'll see, um, you know, it was just a throwaway line from Dubois, which was something like, if you want to go now, we can go now. And AJ was pretty calm. He said, uh, do you want me to smash this chair across your face? And then they got separated. They all both stood up and, you know, it was, it was, it was good. You know, I like, I like a fighter leaving here with a little bit of spite, you know, and, and of course, you know, AJ's going to train at 110%, but nice to have that spite still. And it's a great fight, dangerous fight for both, incredible card. You know, when His Excellency said that he was going to bring Riyadh season to Wembley, I didn't really understand it. Now I do. I think one of the best cards we've ever seen. Were you surprised that Dubois was the aggressor in that circumstance? Do you feel like he was trying to get under Joshua's skin? I just feel that, like, Frank, over the, the years, sort of said to him, you've got to say more. You know, we saw it against Hergovic, just randomly came out with some expletives. And, you know, I think... Uh, you know, when you're getting poked like that in a face-to-face, -face, you know, after a while the temper goes, and it's good. You know, I think it's going to be that kind of fight. How much of the IBF will be on the line? I mean, you know, obviously the mandatory was due, so he had to fight Daniel Dubois. He could have messed around a little bit. Ultimately, he would have had to give up the belt, but thankfully, you know, and obviously that relationship with His Excellency as well. You know, he did what was right, which was rather to mess around and try and hold on to it. But you know, eventually you're going to have to give it up. Let it go. Let these guys compete for it and let the winners fight the winners. How much of a factor do you feel the sparring was? It was a long time ago. And Frank was one of those people that said that Dubois dropped AJ during that time. Does it play a factor at all? And what did you make of it? I don't think, I mean, God, what was it now? It's eight, nine years ago? Yeah, I don't know. But like, didn't Hergovic destroy Dubois in sparring? That was the rumor, wasn't it? And then look what he done to Hergovic. So I don't think that really matters. I mean, both fighters have changed a lot since. Both fighters have gained a lot of experience. I think, I th in all honesty, I think it's a bad time to fight Anthony Joshua, and it's probably a bad time to fight Daniel Dubois. You know, if you look across Dubois' career, he's probably in a form and the confidence of his career right now. Uh, but so's AJ. So in that respect, you've got two Brits fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship at the National Stadium, and um, you know it just sets up a great fight. Eddie, um, he did an interview earlier on today and he said, uh, your relationship with Frank Warren, it's a little bit fake. Yeah. Is it fake or is it real? Oh, I can get why he says that, because he doesn't really, he's not really been around us. I think, you know, I said to Frank earlier, it was like, I don't know, six months, seven months since we first met back there, backstage. And that was fake, because we were told by His Excellency to get on with it, work together and stop the arguments and we said all right then reluctantly but the relationship from there to be fair has blossomed it's become very enjoyable it's very beneficial for our companies but more importantly our fighters and you know with myself not just me and frank but spencer brown as well built this card like up until midnight last night and and you know and his excellency signs everything off he, he's the creator and director of these events and he knows the fights he likes and the fights he doesn't like and you know, we've all done a great job Eddie, um, there was a lot of talk about a year ago when AJ was headlining the O2 in multiple fights that maybe his, start, his stock had gone down a little bit. Now we'll talk about the resurgence of him back at Wembley Stadium and in a yeah, massive fight. Things change very quickly, you know. All of a sudden, you're shot, you're finished. Look at Daniel Dubois, you know, got beat to Joyce, got beat to Usi. Oh, he's a quitter, he's this, he's that. All of a sudden, he's a dangerous heavyweight, he's world heavyweight champion. And, you know, the thing is with AJ is he lost his way a little bit around the Usyk fight. And it took him a couple of fights, really Hellenius and Franklin. The link up with Ben Davison, he's, he's looking more dangerous than ever. He's punching way harder than he's ever punched before. You know, he's now the complete fighter in terms of defence, footwork, everything. Whereas before, we were, we were probably a bit like Dubois. We'd just come in and hope that our strength would just see us through. Now he's got every asset of his game and a great trainer and a great game plan. So I feel like he's in a form of his life. So it, has the path been set by Tekel Alashek, the winner of this against the winner of Tyson Fury? I think it's Lusek? just a natural path. It's not something that His Excellency has turned around to us and said, if you win this, this is what will happen. But at the end of the day, if, if AJ beats Daniel Dubois or when he beats Dubois, you all know what's going to happen. You know, hopefully Fury can beat Usyk and then you've got it. But whatever happens, you know, I, I just, I truly believe he's going to be undisputed. I don't believe there's any heavyweight in the world that beats him right now in this kind of form. And he's just got to get through 21st. Eddie, where do you rate this card historically in UK? And secondly, how do you feel about the ban with Ryan? I mean, on the card, I think it's the best card we've ever seen. Like, you know, 
People talk about AJ against Klitschko. That was a good card. Nowhere near the standard of this card. But it was the drama in the ring that gave us that kind of night. I think on paper, this is the best we've ever seen. Um, you know, but you know, also at the end of the day, anything can happen. But again, on paper, we see now really that this is the best card, top to bottom, we've seen. Um, Ryan Ban. I mean, he hasn't. Yeah, you know, it looks like you've gone in to do a deal. I think that. You know, I look at the Conor Ben situation. If you're not willing to protest your innocence, if you're willing to accept guilt, you can sometimes actually get a better result than if you have to go through a process and fight it. You know, Conor was never willing to go in and do a deal and just say, all right, yeah, all right, I'll just take it on the chin, just ban me. Maybe he should have done that. But he would. He always said, I'm not, you know, I'm innocent and I want to fight it to the death. Ryan's not really fought anything, has he, really? He's just done a deal. And what about Devon's reaction that saying he may step out of the game for a year as well? I think emotionally and mentally, I think he's been tough for Devin Haney. You know, he lost his belt. He took a bit of a beating that night. He showed tremendous heart. But now he finds out he took a beating off someone that was on performance enhancing drugs. It's very difficult to accept, you know. So, um... You know, he'll be back for sure at what weight class we'll have to see. Thanks. Eddie, Eddie, um, when it comes to undisputed, let's say hypothetically Alexander Usyk beats Tyson Fury again, do you think there would be like some reluctancy maybe from Usyk to take that trilogy considering you know, he's already beaten him twice? No, I think it will depend on the deal. You know, I think he'll fight anybody. He'll realise AJ is a much better, different fighter than he was when he first fought him. But I'm sure he'll believe that he can win the fight. Um, you know, but I think... It, this, if AJ goes in and butchers Dubois, then a lot of people are going to believe that he can beat Usyk. So we we'll have to see what happens. Eddie, I also, I also wanted to ask you. Um, it came out a couple of days ago about a former Galalia fire opponent, Moises Caleros, testing. I mean, testing positive for cocaine and getting panned for four years. Obviously, you had not reeling that he's been passed away for three months. How does that sort of happen? And, and how did that happen with, with the correspondence of you? To be fair, it doesn't look great for you, Cad. But let's be honest, it's not really you, Cad's responsibility to search around for people and fighters around the world to see if they've passed away. So what would have happened, and by the way, that fight was on my card. I never had any alert, any email, any information that any fighter had passed test. And that's how UCAD and the board work. They keep it confidential between the parties. I'm not sure I actually agree with that. I think Galau Yafai maybe should have had the right to know that his opponent had tested positive. But anyway, so he would have, the team would have been contacted, right, by UCAD. At the time, Moses Caleros was alive and you know and as the process as it does with UCAD takes forever unfortunately he passed away during that process so I think it looks worse than it is but you know not not ideal. Eddie saw you uh, sh share a handshake with Joshua Boazzi up there there was a lot made of that on how it all ended with you and him uh, what, what is that relationship like now and what was it like seeing him back on I mean, stage? There's still, there's still legal action you know um, in place which hopefully will come to a head soon um, Josh, Josh just got advised badly, that's all. You know, as did Lawrence Acoli. But it's boxing, you know, I think that you you get a lot of fighters who listen to people and, you know, and obviously we feel that our contractual position wasn't respected in that case. I wish him all the best, you know. I've always felt that he could become a world champion, but that opportunity was there for him four years ago and he didn't want to take it. So hopefully, you know, I like Willie Hutchinson as well. It's a good fight. Eddie Tassifu did his first interview publicly after the Usyk loss and one thing he said was that he feels that he needs to knock out Usyk this time, he can't, he doesn't feel like he's going to get a decision on the rematch, do you agree with him on that? No, I mean I think if Fury wins the fight he's going to get the decision and by the way it was a close fight, you know I had Usyk winning by one or two points but at the end of the day anything could have happened in that, that fight, you know sometimes he gets the decision there, most people felt Usyk win but it was a round or two rounds away from a Fury win I think there's no reason why Usyk should get a decision over Tyson Fury. If he's more aggressive in the fight, maybe maybe he can stop him. I mean, he hurt him in the first, you know, in the first fight. So I think he's got a chance in a rematch. You've had a back and forth with Tank Davis before. Uh, he seems to be in talks for the Lomachenko fight. What do you what do you make of that fight? Yeah, I think it's a good fight. I mean, look, I think Lomachenko is towards the end of his career, but as well, he's a very good fighter. I think Tank is a good fighter, but Tank loses a lot of rounds. You know, every fight that tanks in, whether it's Isaac Cruz, whether it's Frank Martin, you know, whether it's Ryan Garcia, he loses rounds. And I think he's going to lose rounds to Lomachenko. It's whether he can get hold of him. He's got fantastic power. But, you know, for me, the fight to make is tank against Shakur Stevenson. Actually, there's rumours about Shakur and Matchroom. What, what, is there anything behind that? No, I, I believe this is his last fight with top rank. I mean, you know, there's been a little bit of flirting on social media. That's about it. I think Shakur Stevenson is pound for pound... 
top five already. He may be the best fighter in the world. And I think he's been promoted terribly. I think nobody knows who he is. And a, a man of that stature and that, that resume and that ability should be a huge star in America. So, look, we've got, I'm flying tomorrow, we've got another one of our superstars, uh, Bam Rodriguez fighting Estrada. Then we've got Jerron Ennis. If we can add Shakur Stevenson to the roster as well, we've got a beautiful thing going in America. And I'm uh, looking forward to a big, big fight this weekend. One more, guys. If, uh, if AJ beats Dubois, um, what would you prefer? Would you prefer the trilogy against Usyk or would you go for the Battle of the Ritz against Fury? Always, always the Fury fight. Always the Fury fight. Cheers, cheers, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, everyone.